What is up, Responsible Day Traders? Today is Sunday, April 24th, 2022. I am Lindsay Duff, and this is Responsible Day Trading. So uh, we had a little bit of an exciting ride last week. So hopefully you were able to take a little bit of advantage of it. The market did pull back to an area that we had looked at several times and then just pushed right off of it to the downside. It was a huge move to the downside. We'd really been seeing this go down since about the 21st and it just kind of has stayed at a downward motion. And we're going to have to see if it's gonna keep it up, if we're gonna reach that area that's held several times and if it's gonna bounce off there, or if we're going to break through it and really start making moves to the downside. Only time will tell, but let's go ahead and take a look at what we got going on this week. So let's start off with the market news. All right, guys. So if you want to check out the market news, you can head on over to responsibledaytrading.com, head here to the news, go to market news, and you can see responsible day trading calendar and market news. Uh, we can just head here and see what we got going on this week. Nothing for Monday, Tuesday. We've got a little bit of pre-market. Then we have 9 a.m. We've got a couple things coming out Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. So that's 30 minutes after the market opens. It doesn't mean that you have to be out of the market, but it just means be aware, pay attention, because it may make a big move at that time. Then we have Wednesday, uh, we have 9 a.m. and 9.30. So we've got a little bit of a break between them, but we've got some big news on Wednesday. Thursday's pre-market, nothing on Friday. All right, let's go ahead and look at what the market has for us this week. And let's go ahead and start off as we like to do with our daily chart. So here we have the daily chart. And this is what I'm talking about right here we can see that we had a giant drop to the downside. So price had pulled up. Let's just kind of take a step back a little bit. We made what looked like it may have been a W pivot and it pulled up here and never equaled that previous pivot area. So a little bit of a failed W if anything. So it pushes up, pulls away from the EMAs. EMAs are flat and MACDs, as you can see, we drew a little dot, a circle here saying, okay, what happens if this pulls down to the area? And it did way more than that. It pulled through the area of the Bollinger Bands and right to the zero line. Now, it looked like it was going to try and give a really good attempt at pulling back up, which just turned into a reversal bar with these weak EMAs, very, very weak pullback in the MACDs. And let's just put a little circle around that so we can look at that major retracement divergence that we have going on as it pulled back into this area. Then it pushed down and we are right back at that 4,200 area that has held several times. We talked about this last week, about how it has the possibility to pull back here and give us a little bit of that head and shoulders action possibly. Right now, the MACDs are not only outside of the Bollinger Bands, but they are outside of the Bollinger Bands with some strength saying that this really could keep going. Now, one of the things that it does have in favor is that it's a lot higher than these last major pivots that happened down here. And that was a very major area. Now, I know we saw this giant pullback that happened here. As we can see, that's not a typical big pullback. So where it came to here is that typical overrun of the area. This was just the most extreme of overruns that could have happened. So we're right back into an area that we could anticipate the MACDs to bounce back up. So we may see this area attempt to hold a little bit and push the market back up. So if it does push it back up, are we expecting it to get back above these EMAs and way back up here? I'd have to say at the moment, no. Now, if it's going to pull back up, maybe something a little along the lines of what we see right here, where it pulls back into the area. Now, this time, the EMAs will be rolling to the downside, will be starting to open up. So it does look like it's really going to make an attempt at a move to the downside. 
We have this big bar that closed towards the bottom. This bar is going to need to do a lot of work if we're gonna be convinced that the market is gonna to push to the upside. Right now it's just a tiny little bar because the day's just started. We can see this is all that's happened on the 1597 so far. So we have a lot of time for something to develop here, maybe something more along the lines of this and push us back down just a little bit further. So, you know, the optimist in me really wants to see this market continue up, but the realist in me says, okay, we are sitting at this area, could be an area for a bounce. We're going to have to see what the other charts say to see if it's going to be something we anticipate this area to hold, or are we going to anticipate breaking through it to the downside? Right now, it's kind of got a little bit in favor of looking like it wants to hold at this area. It's just really, really tough with this close towards the bottom of the bar. So my anticipations, if it's going to go up, would be something more along the lines of what's happened here, or even right here, or even right here, where that bar pushes down and closes towards that bottom of the extreme. And the next bar pushes way, way up to give that hard close down, hard close up look. Um, so it's gonna have to do a lot of work. Can it do it? Yeah, I mean, we've seen this market do this kind of work every day lately. I mean, just look how big each one of these bars are, which tells us that the market was really booking and really moving. And when we look at these tiny, tiny little bars that are happening here, it means that we're just kind of stuck between areas, slow movement, not a lot going on. But when we see these nice long bars like we see here, that means that we've had a lot of action happening that day. So we like to see those because it gives us a lot of opportunity. Um, but we also want to just pay attention to what it's telling us and know what to look for. Let's go ahead and look at the 28657 and let me spread this out just a little bit and let me turn these off. Okay, so here we are at the 28657. Um, and here you can see a little bit more clearly where we pulled back to that area of the EMAs. We overran it just by a little bit and boom, right back down to the downside with a lot of conviction. So what we've seen here is a struggle in the MACDs to continue down. Did it continue down? Absolutely, it continued down. So it's a little bit of a struggle on the way down. Had a nice big pop up. We haven't gotten much further in the MACDs right here. We're still sitting at that same area. So that can be indicative of a nice push back to the upside. If we're looking at where the MACDs are sitting at these extreme areas, we've reached a pretty extreme area in the MACDs, which tells us that we're kind of running out of steam there too. What we need to see is, is this going to hold here and push back up? It probably will give us a little bit more of a pull down. Um, what I would be anticipating is maybe a pull back up towards the Bollinger Band, a roll off and a push back down, which can give us much bigger moves. Like we saw here with the little pullbacks that happened there. It gave us pretty decent moves. I mean, this is a 28,657. So one of these bars being this long is quite a bit of movement. It's 20, 30 points. So we could see this possibly give a move back. Now, if we're looking at the strength and the momentum, the move is to the downside. It's trying to show us the push back up. But the move, the opened EMAs to the downside, the overall has been down. So, you know, until that changes, until we get back above something like this pivot or even back above this pivot, we're gonna expect the bigger moves to be to the downside because we've got these runs, the retraces are those smaller moves and all we've seen so far are the bigger runs to the downside. So we'll have to see a run big enough to get us back above this little pivot or even back above this big pivot in order to really anticipate more up. So, you know, something that we may see is this pull back into this area right here. And I'm just gonna make a little assumption and I'll put a small little area here so we can see that a little bit later. 
pulling back towards this area, the last major pivot to the downside, pushing through there. So pulling back and pushing off of there. So we'll see if it does that. Heck, it may just continue pushing down from this point. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our trading charts and what's happening right here. I mean, you can see very clearly wide spread apart EMAs to the downside really tell us that we've had a nice strong move. And you can see when these EMAs are really wide and spread apart, like we see here, we'll expect to pull back to them and get these little bounces off of the area. I mean, here we didn't quite make it, but guess where we're making it with there? We're making it right into the EMAs on the 1597 whenever we can see these little pullbacks happening here. Bam, bam, bam. Overrun this area to make it to that next one, which we saw by looking at the way the MACDs were behaving. Really good um, anticipations for it to pull back. And then what do we see here? We saw the MACDs leading much, much, much lower at this point, telling us that it was going to push down. And it has. And it's pulled back into these EMAs again and pushing down again. So like I said, I didn't necessarily expect it to continue with a lot of strength to the downside or meaning I don't expect it to really run way, way past this area. But I mean, we got areas of support below us that we can use for the bounce to the upside. So if it does, we're going to pay attention to where it's taking us and what to expect. I mean, you can even see right here, we had some really, really white pivots. It came back up and look what happened when it came down. The move to this downside was much, much stronger than the will for the MACDs to try and turn it around, right? And we can read that by just seeing how wide and spread apart and strong those EMAs are on our bigger tick chart. And even here on our 1597, as we pulled back into the area, MACD's leaving lower to push down. Now, to really see this continue down, we're going to want to see these MACD's come down, the price come down, exceed this little area right in here. We're going to need to exceed that area to see it keep going down. Otherwise, we may see this try and make the move back to the upside. It's really hard to say that it will with these MACDs looking purple and moving down. But the fact that the MACDs on our 1597 have tried to make higher pivots each time, we've come off of these really, really white pivots on the 233. So like I said, the optimist in me wants to see the move to the upside. The realist in me tells me that this market has a chance to continue down more. And you know, part of that real thought is, we have so much going on right now, not just in the markets, but with the world and health issues and war and things like that. And the markets don't tend to just bounce right up to the upside when those kind of things are happening. One of the good things is though, because of what we do here, we can take advantage of whether the market's going up or down. We just really have to pay attention to what it's telling us. If we're not listening to what it's saying, then we're gonna try and make the market do what we want it to do. So like even with me thinking, oh man, this really, you know, I wanna see this move up. I don't wanna see this move to the downside. I could convince myself that it's going up and start taking long trades when the market's really showing me moves to the downside. So just paying attention to those things, listening to what it's saying, not trying to force anything, um, and just paying attention to the behavior is what keeps us afloat whenever we're trading every day. I mean, the more we try to impress our, <laughs> our mindset and what we think the market should do, the more we're going to give money to those who are paying attention to what the market is actually doing. So, all right, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap that up. I hope that everybody has a wonderful week. I am not going to come back in the morning. We're going to go ahead and put this out tonight or maybe early in the morning. We'll do early in the morning. So I hope that everybody has a wonderful week. If you've got questions, reach out to us. We are happy to help. And as always, you know that I'm looking forward to catching you on the profitable side.